I'm Mia Roberts and this is Dragon. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Dragonheart. I am joined by well, I am Bill Long, first of all, <laughs> and I'm joined today by uh Mark Griffiths and uh, a special guest. Uh we've got Ran from America, another American guest. It's been a while since we've had one. I think Sarah Jane was the last American guest we had, Mark, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Ran runs um an account you may have come across on Twitter and YouTube called Teach Me How to Rexham, which I actually co sort of co-host with Ran as well. Um, we'll be we'll be getting into that a little bit later, but uh, give yourself a promotion there, Bill, didn't you? Well, <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> Paul Schaefer claims he co-hosts the late show there. <laughs> um, I, I I just do what I want, Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah, fair comment. <laughs> Uh, but first, we've got we have got some football to talk about before we get into all that. So we're going to be talking about the uh, incredible game at Notts County, uh, the women's game on Sunday against uh, TNS, and we're going to be looking ahead to the matches. Plus, speaking to Ran. Plus, uh, we do have some other topics to cover if we get there. This is Dragonheart. If we get there, that's very pessimistic. Who do you reckon? I mean, not going to last the, the length of this recording. Tragic. What kind of turns are we taking today? <laughs> Me, I'm, re- I'm redecorating the house before the baby arrives, so there's a good chance that I'll fall asleep at the desk today. <laughs> Fair enough. And we'll, we'll be promised not to draw anything on you. No, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll, you'll really find it hard to not draw something on me, but I appreciate it, Mark. Yeah, I, I've fallen asleep enough in school to know the pitfalls. <laughs> um. Anyway, should we just crack on? Notts County. No, because uh, this is an introduction. <laughs> We're supposed to put a pause in them. How many times do I have to tell you, man? You're the host. You should know these things. Just I'll just cut it Dragon there. Art. This is Dragon Art. Yeah? No? It is Dragon Art. <laughs> it is Dragon Art. <laughs> I'm Luke Young, and this is Dragon Art. So, gentlemen, Notts County 0, Wrexham 2. Mark, you were there. Ran, you were able to watch the stream abroad. I only had the pleasure of uh, listening to the lads uh, on the commentary. Uh, we'll start with, with you, Mark. What was the experience like for that game? It was darn good, <laughs> I've got to say. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, I was so impressed by how we went about it. I was so impressed by how we made alterations and they worked like a dream. I was so impressed with the fact that, you know, we lose Tony Cliff to add to all our other defensive injuries uh, in the warm-up. And Parkinson keeps his head, sticks to the plan. Tosa steps in, having had a rough time lately in all sorts of different ways, um, and having not even really warmed up properly. And we put in a brilliant defensive performance. And... At the other end, we do what we need to do. It was a fabulous performance against a team that we know are of the highest quality. So I'm a, I was a very happy boy. I'll, I'll be honest with you at the end of that. Yeah, uh, so was I. I think from even just listening to it. Um, I mean, it going back to sort of the build up and, the, and those changes. Uh, Ram, what what did you think when the when the lineup was released? Well, I mean, I think. You know, like everybody else knows, uh, I was full of panic and uh, immediately forgot that I should trust Parky no matter what he does in all his endeavors. And uh, yeah, I, I was sitting back, getting bracing myself, getting ready to uh, hear Knott's County Zone um, repost and bookmark past tweets. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me give you a couple of uh, facts. I don't often have interesting facts, but these are, I think. Um, firstly, both George Evans and Tom O'Connor, who we both we know can play at centre back. Uh, you know, it, it's more the fact of putting them both in there together, um, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, both of them have essentially played twelve percent of their career at centre back. So you know, in the, the the professional games that they've played in their careers so far, both of them about twelve percent of them were at centre back. So obviously. 
for both of them, 88% of their careers have been spent not at centre back, which which shows that you know they're not hugely experienced in those roles. And secondly, um, you know, it has to be said that Andy Cannon has played in the middle of a midfield three twice this season on both occasions we let in five goals at home. So when you you know when you consider that context, it was a bold move. But having the mobility of those two centre backs and asking them to step out to close down McGoldrick and Crowley really early, firstly reduced their effectiveness, and secondly cut off the supplies of Langstaff. It's exactly what we did when we beat them three two, and then Cannon did what I think Parkinson's always been thinking in those positions because not County keep them on the floor. So physicality is not so much of an issue, but he's good at intercepting and nipping in. And then when we were able to take the the game to them, two big chances, including one of the goals, happened because Cannon makes an interception high up the pitch. And for me, that I, I thought Cannon, you know, who's had a really a, a poor season this season in the sense that it's been very stop-start, um, was... Ter- terrific, I thought, on Saturday. Other people were obviously terrific, but he, I thought, really stepped up to the place. Best performance he's given for Axum, I thought. It was really enjoyable. Yeah, it, it sounds like he had a cracking game. And not speaking of cannons and not and not to to no relation to Andy Cannon, but I looked at that lineup and thought we looked like a bit of like a glass cannon. I don't know if you ever heard mm. of that that term before, Mark. It's like a you know, like a re- really, really strong unit in a computer game or or bo- like a role-playing board game that has awful defensive capabilities. So they're like, you know, they're really, you know, like almost like if you shot someone out of a glass cannon, it would shatter, but still probably shatter you as well. Um, <laughs> but actually, that was probably our best defensive performance of the season, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, and, and like you say about... Um, O'Connor and, and Evans playing at centre back, and they've not had that much time there. That you you wouldn't be able to tell. I think for, for me, from what I've seen of highlights and what it sounded like on the radio, o- O'Connor had a, a mm. man of the match sort of performance as well. Well, we made a man of the match, um, and Evans was excellent as and Tozer, uh, the three of them, really that the standards were exceptionally high. I think we've had similar defensive before. No, no, I'm going to rephrase that. We haven't had similar performance. We, we've had similarly solid defensive performances. I'm thinking of Crawley, where we're down to 10 men with half an hour left. Um, mm. But this worked and was really satisfying because those two wide centre... We did something very different. Those two wide centre-backs stepping out. There was a little bit of instability at the start because County spotted what we were doing. And so we've got we've basically got one centre-back stepping out to stop the attacking midfielder on their side of the pitch when they've got the ball. And so County spotted this. And what they were doing, they were releasing O'Brien, who's deeper, making him get runs in to the gap that that centre-back had left. And we spotted this, and we basically sort of made a little adjustment to close that gap. So our, our remaining defenders went a bit tighter, and we sort of turned into a back four with one of the centre-backs coming out, so that gap was closed. And at that point, around the 20th minute, Not County really stopped threatening in our penalty area. They had shots from outside the box, but the, the threat of them doing that was gone. And yeah, we were rock solid. But like I said, we were similarly rock solid to games like Crawley, but it wasn't in a similar way. It was a very different, quite bold way to defend, and it worked beautifully. I was really impressed. And I would also say we're very patient when we didn't have the ball, which is crucial against a team like Notts County, who was so good on the ball. We could, we were patient, we were calm. You can have the ball. You can pass it around as you want, as long as you're not hurting us. Pass it around in front of us, shoot from outside the box, because a Quanko should cover stuff like that, because he fills the goal. You know, so... You know, I don't know, ran from afar. A Conquo, does he cut as impressive a figure as, as he does when, when we're in the ground seeing this, this huge monster just, just ca- casually catch long-range stinging shots like like he's just uh, you know picking something off the shelf in a supermarket? <laughs> yeah, it, it's... You, you can't help but, as you're watching, faint echoes of, oh, 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 Conquo. <laughs> it's I, he's 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 magic in goal that that save that he did uh with McGoldrick that you know that that could have been a tied turning goal uh you know it, it's McGoldrick he 
makes those all the time. And a Conquo, all six, six of him in his, I don't know, six, eight arm span. I don't know what the Velociraptor or the Pterodactyl arm span is on that character, but <laughs> he, he stretched, got his hand on it and, you know, popped back up to his feet, you know, with, with dominance when he, after he put his hand on it, hit the ground, he immediately jumps back up just to let you know, you know, I'm, I'm not playing. There's mm-hmm. nothing coming past me. Mm-hmm. And is, where is he on the capability or uh, uh, talent level of goalies at Wrexham? Because obviously I have only seen recent goalies so I, or goalkeepers. I don't know the extent of the talent pool. And he is amazing. It's it's difficult to say because he's only been with such a short us for such a short time, but potentially he's got to be up there with I mean, I've been going regularly since the mid two thousands and Mark's been going a bit longer, but he's got to be up there in with, with the best in terms of potential. You know, he he strikes me as someone that is whether it's with us or with somebody else will not be playing League Two football next season. Mm. Guarantee it. He probably wouldn't even be playing League One football, if I'm completely honest. There's a good chance of champ- a decent championship side will look at him, mainly because he's a, he's going to be a free transfer in the summer and think, yeah, he's he's worth a go. Uh, well, I mean, we'll 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 see. I guess it's it's a it's easy to give someone a lot of praise. He's not had a a game where he's come under real proper pressure yet. When we played Crew Alexandra and he conceded three. I wouldn't say he was under sustained pressure. It was, and by pressure, I don't mean having periods where he's got to save a lot defensively. It's like he's not had a blip. So we don't know how he's going to react to having a game where something might, a result, whether it's a draw from a winning position or a loss from a drawing position, mm-hmm. has been his fault yet. So hopefully it never comes to that. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, we've had some great keepers in the past, Mark, that have bounced back from from big moments, haven't we? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I would say first, the impression you get from him on Mark Howard's uh, Yours Mine Away podcast, that's a hell of a good interview between the two of them, is that he seems like the sort of fellow who might take disaster in his stride and just keep going. He seems quite level-headed. Um, also, more importantly, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, ter- Pterodactyl's maximum wingspan was just over a metre. So I reckon a conquo has got that guy sorted. The biggest pterosaurs had a wingspan of 11 to 12 metres. So again, just short of a conquo. Um, yeah, thirdly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of goalkeeper, I mean, I've had so many wonderful goalkeepers. And I'm, you know, I, I, I love what I see of a conquo. I don't want to go overboard. You know, the guy's not played 10 games for us yet. But yeah, um, he certainly looks to have the the, the talent I mean, you look at quite a lot of keepers that we've had um, who are sort of solid citizens, if you will. You know, I'm thinking of the likes of Chris Dunn or Anthony Williams, good goalkeepers, Gavin Ward, who I know that the Long family are big fans of his. Um, Big, strong, solid technical keepers who do a good job for us and didn't let us down. But Oconquo's clearly got that extra little bit of stardust, that little bit of X factor, that ability to pull off difficult saves that ability to pull off awkward saves like he did uh, not County on two or three occasions and make them look straightforward because he's big and he's limber and he moves well. And some of those saves, a lot of other keepers have been happy just to push away. He was catching them. Um, mm. He's got great hands. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's a class act. Bless him. Yeah, I think it was that Cameron uh, shot that mm. uh, kind of came uh, to the left or to a uh, right. And, that was a hard, that was a hard kick, and he just ate it. He yeah, caught it, gobbled it up, and I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, most other people that would have bounced off, and you would have been looking for that second chance, but no, not with him. Yeah, as well, Rand. The thing is, you say about that shot by Cameron. I was saying the other week on Dragonheart, you often feel you watch the game, and then when you see the highlights, the footage of it, it doesn't seem as fast, and whether that's because you expect, you know, you didn't see it coming when it happened live and you know what's going to happen or whether it's just a trick of the camera. But I can promise you, um, I remember, I can tell you in my match notes as as the game was going on, I wrote Cameron Rocket (laughs) because it was, he smashed that shot. And the Conquo just, just thank you very much, 
like you say, it was it was, it was prime re- rebounds material. And yeah, Conco just said, "Cheers, thanks for that. <laughs> You're not troubling me with this." Yeah, yeah, he's very lovable. I've seen you see so many keepers of real quality. When I was a kid, Eddie Dzwiecki, um was was brilliant, real quality keeper. And I went to Chelsea. Um, and he was se- he was playing second fiddle at first to Di Davis. The goalkeeper was very different then, but he was commanding Di Davis. Um, I always loved Mike Hooper, who we took on loan from Newcastle, signed him, and I only had him about half a season before Liverpool came in and took him, and he played quite a few games to Liverpool, and he was a very talented goalkeeper. But, yeah, I- I've always had a soft spot for Chris Maxwell. Um, but, yeah, um, the Conquo certainly got the... The class to match those players, like you say, Bill, it's about having the the mental strength and consistency to match that over a number of years. But he's he's got the, he's got the, the skills, most definitely. Yeah, certainly has. But um, speaking of skills, there were plenty on display, wasn't there? Uh, I mean, can can I know we've already mentioned him. It's it's got to be said. To you know, and again speaking about mental fortitude as well. To to have the the, I think it's fair. I know you were you were being kind of kind of nice earlier, Mark, saying that um, he he had a bit of a bad start to the season. That was because of the stop start nature. I think it would be fair to say on in terms of form, it's taken him a bit of time to adjust as as well. But to to come from from the sending off that he had. A few weeks ago, and then and then out have a performance like that against a team like Notts County just kind of shows how, you know, it's 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 a mentality that runs across the entire team, isn't it? Um, I don't know where I'm going with that, really. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> so you went in a good place. He's um, uh, honest, honestly, <laughs> my head's gone today. <laughs> Part of me would want to say yes, um, and, and is it a case of? I kept using this phrase on Saturday horses of course is that against Notts County he can play that disruptive role against uh, Sutton going long ball he probably would find it a lot more difficult um very, very, very true and I, and I I do I do think as well that part of the reason that like when that that lineup came out and a lot of people were having meltdowns and I totally understood why I did feel like I said it myself that I would be like perfect or suicide and that was because you know, he'd got Parky had chosen a team that was that was uh, for mobility and being able to to keep up the pace with their their fast movement and you know all the all the the press and, and fast passes they do to each other, blah blah blah. But you know, like you go less defensive, it can backfire on you. So I can understand why people were a bit scared, but I do think we sort of picked the side that was that was there for for using. But you play you play that kind of. Football against like we did against Sutton. If we'd have played that formation, might have struggled in that second half, mightn't we? So fair play to Parky. I think he he, he often gets criticised for being tactically inflexible, and we have talked about that before. But it's just a load of old nonsense, isn't it? It certainly is. Um, I, I, I like I said last week, I can't get my head around that, so I won't repeat myself. I just no. can't get my head. I, I think people who say he's tactically inflexible, what do they expect tactically? I, I don't understand that. I'd like to see their alternative. But anyway, um, and, and managers are able to get things wrong, and Parkinson does sometimes get things wrong, and he has picked mm. that sort of side and games like at Chesterfield at the start of last season, and it didn't work. But um, his success rate is remarkably high for us. That's all I, that's all I can say, really. Um, as well, Ran, I mean, gosh, such a big occasion. We've had this week's Welcome to Wrexham episode, of course, looking at Wrexham, Notts County, and it really brought across that sense of occasion well. Um, did did it feel similar this week, do you think? I know it's only early season. Nothing's decided on last Saturday's results, but it did, it did it feel a bit different, similar in a way, to be reigniting this massive rivalry. I, I think for us, maybe the international fans, yes, because mm-hmm. this is this is the matchup that right when the schedule was released, immediately looking at when when do we face knots? You know, when and then when the episode came out and I got to see, you know, Bill celebrating in the street before uh that, oh. that, that good <laughs> clip of him, you know, I it's I knew there was gonna be magic. I just didn't know <laughs> whose side was gonna have the magic. And but but yeah, that that there is 
I guess for us, the important games that we've seen so far, uh, Knotts has dominated a lot of those. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that conversation, of course, we have Grinsby and Stockport. And so we get to return a few favors, hopefully, this season. And we'll see what happens next season. Uh, to allude to a Conquo not playing in League One next year. Very bold of Bill to say that we are skipping a whole league and going to the championship. <laughs> it's just a weird claim <laughs> to have. <laughs> but well, you, when you've got that Hollywood money, Ran, you can do what you want. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, you saw but, in, but, in this week's episode, uh, Ryan Reynolds was talking about buying referees. Maybe he'll yeah. start buying a few leagues. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, this will get clipped out of context. And it'll be the headline. Oh, it's it's going to be seen. Tomorrow, won't it? Wrexham Re <laughs> some plan to bribe football league in football shocker. Well, that's why I had to wear the the black kit since they were so uh, or or Ryan was so presumptuous to say we're getting the black kit or or, or whoever's call it was. And it's like, yeah, 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 we're going to be using those. We're going to wear them next yeah. season. Uh, but but yeah, to the to the the buildup of the game and to the importance of Knotts County. Definitely for us, we still have the taste in our mouth from last season um, and it feels good. Yeah. If it, it felt good this this time, you know, the first half, what are we looking at? 65% possession for Knotts County, which is regular. And, you know, we're we're in the 30s and it's like, okay, we're both playing our game and and they are great passers. They make accurate passes. And then we had opportunities and we exploited them and made them pay. And I and I think that's like the brilliance of the two different styles of football that you have here you have a beautiful passing style possession style of football from Knotts County um and then you have just this weaponry of Wrexham that at any point in time they can put you to the sword so if you blink and you make the wrong step you could have played what is that possession 68 percent of the game you could have played it well and made great passes to each other but the game was won you know in that 30 odd percent and i think uh we had equal shots on goal mm. i think it was a uh, 15 15 and um and obviously our accuracy and our completion rate was just a little bit better but i mean at those those goals too i mean how good how how good is lee oh my goodness <laughs> he's a how good he he was playing snooker or pool. He he lined up. He knew exactly where Tozer's knee was going to be. <laughs> and he just deflected it perfectly at the right angle. It's <laughs> well, he's a marksman. Tozer to make exactly the right shape to bounce oh, yeah. the ball off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and to Tozer too, he him coming in this game, I think he has the second most minutes played. Mm -hmm. And uh so I wouldn't I would go and ask Tunnicliffe what happened with the injury before the game if it wasn't toes are just trying to edge up his minutes so that he can he can be the most minutes played first in the season I've, i'm not saying something happened but i'm saying something happened <laughs> the um I, I your points about the stats are just so right as well aren't they it, it and i'm not knocking notts county i i really they're very easy on the eye i, I enjoy watching them but we in the last two games have Managed to make them pass the ball around in front of us. I mean, the, okay, we had two goals in at the race course. One of them is a free kick because you know nobody touched the guy; he just tripped himself over. And then the Lost second, one is, yeah, yeah. And then the, the second one's a sloppy set piece, which anyone can do. Not County, not really terribly associated with set piece goals, but you know, on that occasion, we were slack. Um, but apart, but and then in open play, we were great. And the same last Saturday, we looked really solid defensively. And it's it's not having lots of possession. It's what you do with it. And we were happy to say, have it. Have it when you're not hurting us. We'll just gather ourselves. And as you rightly say, we're good at breaking away at pace and making real opportunities. And I, I, I did feel even when Notts County were dominating possession, we were doing better than them. You know, it's not just about who's got the ball most, is it? We we looked more dangerous when we got it than they did when they had it. Um, I put a... I tweeted out a lovely graph before the match and said I'd make reference to it in a commentary. And of course, once the game started, I got so carried away with the game, I didn't make reference to it. But I'll make reference to it now and I'll stick a, a link to it in the um, the comments. 
there's a brilliant piece of data from the season before the Notts County game, and it's a graph of playing styles. So it's it's how quickly you get the ball forwards, and then it's how many passes you tend to have in a move. So it, it sort of backs me up first. And I've always said, some people say Wrexham a long ball team. We're not. We mix it up, and we are bang in the centre of that. We are exactly the middle in terms of how quickly we get the ball forwards and how many passes it takes. So we do mix it up. Sometimes we go forwards quickly. Sometimes we dominate the ball. Uh, so we're bang in the middle. Notts County are, are pretty much in a different graph. <laughs> it's amazing. The, 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 they're so at the extremes of the most passes per move and the slowness of their build-up. They are. It really is. Everyone's sort of clustered around and then Notts County are off like sort of in Pluto. Uh, it's just, it's astonishing. <laughs> but it does show it. Notts County love having the ball. They have a really good way to play. But at, at the moment, we found a good way to counteract that. And it's great. And I'm already looking forward to the return match to see what the two managers cook up next. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, I, I don't even think it's an indictment on uh, Notts County as a team, you know, between, between us and Mansfield. It takes, I, I think the style of how we play is 100% the way to counter them. But if you're a team like, I'm only picking on Sutton because we played them recently, but if you're a team like Sutton and you play like that against them, if you don't have the quality to actually break them down, it's not going to work because eventually they'll find a gap and they'll score. Uh, so, I, 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 you know, as as people sort of say in combat sports, styles make fights. And I think our style isn't better than theirs. It's on par with theirs. It's just that it we match up better against them than they match up mm. against us. But may maybe, you know, we'll see when they come to the race course if it, uh, if it stays like that. But I think, what's that, three games we played against a Luke Williams, Notts County now, two last year. Did he, did he come in at the start of last year? Yeah, he did, did didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So out of three games we played against Notts County with him in charge, we've lost one and won two. But I'd argue the one that we lost, we deserved the point out of it. And the, the lads just weren't firing on the night where they, you know, they 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 could have scored two or three opportunities. So um my recollection of that one yeah. to carry on the, the combat sports image is that it was a toe-to-toe -to -toe slugfest. We we didn't play like we did in the two wins. We didn't look to counteract them, we looked to go at them. And how it was one nil is beyond me because we squandered lots of good chances and good situations where we got the last pass wrong. And then at the other end, it hadn't been for Mark Howard, they'd have scored five. It was just one of those games mm. that was, well, like a lot of the games we've had under Parkinson, you know, five all draws and all that daftness, except on that occasion, for some reason, nobody could hit a net, except Langstaff once. So, yeah, it's it is, it's a fascinating matchup. And it is fascinating now to see, well, what, does Parkinson do the same against them at the race course? I know we're looking in the future, but, you know, does Williams think... I need to spring a surprise. It's it's, it's a fascinating uh, setup, isn't it? It, it? it is, yeah. And I'm, I'm just having a look at the fixtures really quickly just to see when. It, I know it'll be the back end of the season when we play them again. Well, while um, you look the, for that, can the... I just take issue with one thing you said? You say Styles makes fa make fights. No, no. Styles made one direction. And it's just tragic what's happened since. Sorry, <laughs> just had to say it. Mark, we've we've already, already got some man. we've already got some celebrities. We don't need to be caught in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we play them in on the seventeenth of February. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Joe, she's had to come. In the, she's had to come in the room to get something, and she just amused me because she put like a. a you know, like a gift bag in front of her face to try and hide it. I don't think she <laughs> so, realizes so that, like, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, as you can hear, he's talking about the mid February. He's planning something for Valentine's, clearly. Uh, well, yeah. That's what we all got together. Oh, for. I, I, I hadn't even thought. <laughs> last, last year, I did take her to the hospitality for Valentine's Day. So, uh, ah, you class. Oh, class, no, man. it was great. She, she had a great time because we can't usually get her tickets. So she was actually really chuffed with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, February, it's it's not going to be. It's not like the last time we played them, where it's a, a sort of do or die match uh, in, in terms of the time of year. But there's going to be a lot of football played before then, isn't there? And, and it'll be interesting to see how both sides have have progressed. But uh, 
from one slobber knocker of a match to another. Uh, after this, we are going to be talking about the Wrexham women's game. I'm Steve Dale, and this is Dragon Heart. The Wrexham women's game. I did not manage to catch it, unfortunately, because I had to enter the seventh gate of hell, which is also known as Cheshire Oaks. Uh, that is a that is a, a, a shopping centre ran just outside uh, Ellesmere Port. It's not too far over the border. Uh, I was buying baby things, so I didn't get a chance to see any of the, the game. I am assuming you watched the stream, Ram? Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Now that they're, you know, streaming and, of course, Mark commentating, you you can't miss them. <laughs> I, I have two good days a week now, you know, getting that yeah. Wrexham drug fix. You know, and it, it it gets hard. It gets hard jonesing through the week, you know, if we don't have that Tuesday match or something. But yeah, definitely caught the Sunday match <laughs> for sure. Nice one. And and uh, obviously, Mark, you were there commentating with Che. Um, how was the performance? Excellent. I was really, you know, it's a voyage of discovery, isn't it? Really, we're coming up. It's a new division. It's it's a it's a new setup, not just in terms of for us, but for Welsh football and. So it's all a bit of a, you know, okay, what are what is our level? And we've gone into it with the intention of getting into the top four so that we can make the split when it goes into playoffs. And, wow, I mean, on Sunday against Cardiff Met, we will complete the first half of the season. So you'll have played everybody once. And, wow, I mean, I think we've we've outperformed what we'd have hoped for because we've given, we've given good games to the two big professional sides, if you will, inverted commas, Cardiff and Swansea. And then we've played a couple of the sides who expect to be in the top four, Aberystwyth and TNS. Huge games back-to-back. Two superb and different performances at Aberystwyth. We scrap our way and win. Well-deserved. I'm not I'm not using scrap in a pejorative sense. We had to fight against a strong team on their own pitch uh, to get a result. And we did exactly that. And we deserved it. And then on Sunday, against a really well-established women's team, we we were excellent. Three one. I'm not. I don't want to knock TNS, and there were some good individual performances by them in the first half hour. A bit like the Notts County game, they had good control of possession. But goodness me, three um, one flattered them by the end. The last hour, we were. Oh, we were excellent. I thought we were excellent in the first half hour because they didn't trouble us that much, and we still looked dangerous going forwards. And then the last hour, we just ran the show. It was magnificent to watch. Love it. Yeah, I mean, that puts us joint second, uh, but te- technically in third on goal difference. It's um, it's it's a marvellous thing to see. And, uh, and you know, like, Ram, the, the women's game over here, I don't think is quite as well... Res- no, let me rephrase that. I don't think the women's game over here was quite as well respected as it is in the US. I, I think that there is a... Uh, especially, it's got to be said in England with with the success of the the wing in England women's national side seems to be getting a lot more press. But it, is is it how 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 is the women's side viewed by yourself? And do you think like the sort of the collective of international fans? Oh, I I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I think that uh, the the danger of the women's exposure is it us. You know, international American fans are just going to fall more in love with Wrexham and uh, with the area because for us, like you said, our our number one team is the women's team. And so us football or soccer fans from the U.S., we are more partial to watching women's matches and watching that style of play. And, you know, that's that's something that is at home. So when we didn't have that the first couple of seasons of the takeover, as far as you know, being able to watch or listen to matches, there was a, definitely a hole and there was a void that you guys probably saw repeatedly of us reaching out and saying, hey, when are we going to hear? And almost every new American fan that would come in and join the hashtag Ask Rexham, inevitably they would say, hey, when are the women's games? Where are the women's games? How do we watch the women's games? And so definitely, uh, like I've said it before, I hope that as American fans, the one thing that we can do is give back to you guys a lot of the kindness and welcoming and warmth that you've given to us by supporting and trying to help build and lift up uh, the women's game. Uh, for for us, it's a no-brainer. And if 
you know, you guys need a couple hundred thousand or whatever it is of us uh, cheerleaders supporting. Uh, we're here for it. And then obviously, I mean, who who can't root for Rosie Hughes and Super Del Morgan and <laughs> uh, Pritchard doing those cheeky little uh, crosses, no look score goals. You know, you, it's there's there's just such a, a, a funness to the game and a raw and a pureness to the game that uh that that is very enjoyable and i'm glad we finally get to see it and then hear mark's beautiful voice commentating uh, yeah. uh as a- as a- a- asmr oh <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Is T and S a, a, a yeah? Donkey? The lovely sound of me chewing a pork pie while commentating. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky they don't do live, uh, you know, super chats or or bonuses because, uh, you know, you might get some ridiculous requests out there. <laughs> <Yeesh>. <laughs> I think I think that's the the appropriate response, Mark. To be fair, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's better than going, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, do, do you know, know what? It's, but I, I have standards, but still. Uh, <laughs> the, Mark, um, Mark, Mark after dark needs to happen, I think. I think uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you are killing it. ASM Mark and Mark after dark. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm sort of envisaging it being a bit like William Shatner's version of Rocket Man. Um, <laughs> oh, geez. we'll take yeah. it from there. Uh, yeah, but a long, long time. <laughs> Words that effect. Sorry, I wasn't ready for the William Shatner impersonation. Then I'm gonna go. I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's ready for a William Shatner impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm working. I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm getting myself ready to do it again in a minute, though. <laughs> Um, it's it's funny that you, you mentioned the, the sort of comments from the international supporters, and and in fairness, you know, it, I, I've seen Australians and Canadians both talk about it as well. Because I think, uh, especially in Australia, you know, the Matildas did really well, didn't they? And they had the World Cup down there recently. Um, I, it's something I'm incredibly conscious of. Wow, that was amazing. Did, that was that was brilliant. How on earth did she that fit was amazing. right in that gap then? Um, well, just little is... little peepers right through the the <laughs> gap. Of the... I can't even manage to do it now. Fair play. Uh, no, it's I have it's no idea I... what's going on. <laughs> the the cat appeared in 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 that little gap where my border isn't working. Um, yeah, just two big old puss and boot eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> the audio listeners are still intrigued by this. <laughs> you have a gap, <laughs> which is where which 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 is showing. Yeah, do you? Right, so no, Mark. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the headphones of a gap and the background is showing is not showing through it. For for the audio listeners, I have a Zoom background and my headphones, are, like Mark just said. Anyway, yeah. So I am really, really conscious personally of of, of our coverage of the women's game, and I, 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 we we get re- reoccurring comments about having more women on and and about co- last year it was all cover the women's game, covers the women's game, and you, you know. It's 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 I feel it's difficult for me at the moment on a personal level just because I have a lot going on in my personal life to I barely have the time to follow the men's games. But it, for, for everyone who's listening, who's listening and, and has, you know, put those comments in, we are working on it. it. This kind of thing just takes time to build. It's not, you know, it's I think it's fair to say we're all unpaid volunteers doing this. We're uh, making our best efforts to improve the, the coverage of the women's game, and uh, and hopefully, by Mark covering those games, we really are, you know, trying to to improve that. Don't worry, Bill. Don't worry, Bill. The, the, the people understand, and also, I am. Um, I would say the reason is more just that I'm gauntless. And on Tuesday night, I'll suddenly think, oh, we're doing Dragon Out tomorrow. Oh, it's too late to ask anybody. I'm yeah, afraid that's, yeah. that's the way I'm operating at the moment. If you were to ask me who Wrexham are playing a week on Saturday, well, actually, I think I might know, but I'm not 100%. And I think that shows you everything about how I'm, 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 li- I'm living each day at a time, I've got to say. It's it's, it's chilling him for the it's men. Chilling him. That was right. Uh, oh, no, there you go. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, and it's it's yeah. Swansea away for Swansea. the women. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I got a question, Ran, if that's okay, about the women's yeah. games, which is sort of about something more than the women's games or the football in general. I think it's fair to say something that Welcome to Wrexham has done exceptionally well is tell a story about a community rather than the football club. And mm. I think that that um, has a big influence, not only on the amount of people who are interested to see how it turns out, but also in terms of the type of people who are interested, because I think people who are, uh, shall we say, more self-absorbed and community-minded, it's not going to appeal to them. So we get an awful lot of people who are new fans, no matter where they are, who are interested in learning about a new place, are interested in committing to people, are interested in making a contribution to that community, as you just said. Um, but I'm just interested... Yeah, I'm very aware from my love of football and other sports in other countries, there's a pleasing sense of the exotic sometimes. And, you know, I'm not saying us going to London is exotic to international fans, but in a weird way, the British people wouldn't get us going to Crawley is because people are thinking, what is a Crawley? You know, what, what is it like? What's going on? What are these clubs like? It's interesting sort of learning. You know, someone should start a sort of teach me how to wreck some podcast. <laughs> because I think that would really tap into it. Um, but am I right in maybe suggesting that the women's game is doing that even more because we're actually going into the Welsh hinterland? And, you know, welcome to wreck some sells Wales as a country as well and sells Wales in terms of culture. And then we go to Pulferi. We go to Aberystwyth. I have to consult my well-speaking wife on the pronunciation of one of the Aberystwyth players. And she says, I've never seen that lane before in my life. And her first language is Welsh. You know, that whole journey. And th is that an appealing thing, do you think? We're actually showing Wales now as well, in a sense. Oh, yeah. I, I think also it's just hints to the brilliance and the forethinking of the producers, the executive producers on Welcome to Wrexham, is that they laid out the compelling side of the men's game, which, you know, was was digestible in its sense and very digestible. And that groundwork was settled. And then they said, oh, yeah, you, you like this thing? Well, guess what? We also have this. And to to us international uh, fans, Wrexham was Wales. Mm. You know, to season one of the uh, documentary and even, you know, the last two seasons watching Wrexham, it was Wales. That was the Welsh team that took on the English teams. That is mm. to for for us, that was our representation. And then, like you said, opening up that onion or the chapter to the book and then the brilliance of, OK, here is a whole nother level of you liked that one part here is another depth that you can dig into and getting to see places like the rock with you know uh, a, a mountain on the side or a hill on the side that's all maybe granite or whatever it is that's right there that people are playing and for us you, we don't see that every day and mm -hmm. then a quick travel and then you talk about what are the best fish and chips you can get around that area in between this location and uh, in Wrexham on your way there or on the way back. And then so I'm sure other people are doing, like I have a, a, a WhatsApp group or not, I have a WhatsApp group, but there's WhatsApp group I'm a part of and we'll talk about things. And it's like, hey, put a flag on Google, save that location because when we're there, we'll have to go try some fish and chips in that <laughs> area. So it's it's also doing a bit for tourism because it's showcasing parts of Wales and places where, oh, I'd like to go watch a match over there. Yeah. I would like to take that day trip because you guys talk about it. Oh, the drive over here was lovely. You know, we either went through these open fields or we went through the hills or whatever it was that got you to there. And then we're thinking, well, well I want to see that too. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just, it's yes, there's Wrexham and Wrexham proper. And of course we all want to go and see that. But now you are turning our, you know, three, four day trips or week trips into two week trips. And if you guys aren't careful, it's going to turn into a month and then you're going to have to, you know, start fighting us for, you know, <laughs> full summer breaks or something like that of uh, the influx of a uh, uh, international tourism. So yeah, it's your fault. It's your fault. Thank yeah, you. Fair enough. Speaking of, of, uh, of Welsh historical sites, I think we've got a Welsh historical site on our hand in a, 
Rosie Hughes with her 100th goal out of 46 games. I mean, what an absolute achievement that is, Mark. Arvon Griffiths, Gary Bennett, Andy Morrell, Tommy Bamford, Tommy Bannon. There's another one. And Rosie Hughes. Wow. Paul, Paul Mullin? <laughs> not yet. Not quite. 82. He's oh, is it? Oh, oh. oh is that 83? Ooh. I mean, it's got to be said that Rosie Hughes' strike rate is is phenomenally better than any of those players, including Mullen and Bamford, who were the top two in Wrexham's history in terms of goals per game. Uh, but Hughes knocks that into a cocked hat. I mean, she's an absolute phenomenon, you know? I mean, and, and what a way to bring up the 100th. What a fabulous goal that was. I mean, so alert and aware. And I know I said this in the final whistle, but you see players scoring from long distance. We were all going mad. Uh, in the Premier League last Saturday with Billings' goal for Bournemouth. And yeah, it was a magnificent goal. But, you know, all those goals you make a fuss of, players have time to set themselves and have a look and see where the keeper is. Hughes didn't look up, she hit her first time. She just knew that was the situation. Now, that's the sign of a very high-class player. You've got the picture in your head already of where everybody is. That is just brilliant. And again, I just like the... And this is something we get a lot of goals from in the women's team. Uh, I know I'm being a bit simplistic, but my words, we have a lot of players who chase lost causes and they make things happen. Mm. Pritchard's winning goal against Aberystwyth, Rosie Hughes' goal against Aberystwyth with both Pritchard and Hughes, and then Cara Jones just will not stop running. She refuses to sh- stop running. And the ball it was the full-back's ball. But he, as I say, Cara Hughes then, Cara Jones, um, you know, but she's chasing it anyway, just in case there's a miscontrol. And when there is a miscontrol, she's right in there to create a loose ball for Rosie Rosie to to nail. Was just, was just... Rosie Jones, yeah, yeah. Ro- Rosie Jones, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Did I say Rosie Jones? Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I like that I've learned today that uh, if you are a good goal scorer, your last name is Hughes. So oh, that's, oh, all, that's all you need question. to know. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Paul Paul Hughes has yeah. been tearing it up. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> and likewise, I thought going back to the women's game, I thought Della Conquo was brilliant. And. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, you know, speaking of of mergers, uh, well, it's not quite a merger, but it's quite funny how the uh, tactically, obviously, it's different because the, the women's and men's games are different. And we spoke to Steve Dale in the past, and he spoke talked about how he likes his teams to play. But there is there's almost that um, to, to coin a phrase from a from a, a brilliant B side track to the uh, fearless and no, not fearless and devotion. That's the, that's the podcast. Uh, the Rex is the name. We start to develop a Wrexham way, aren't we? There's that tenacity. I, you know, I think the, you can say about the men's team that they always chase lost causes. Uh, I mean, whole games, in fact, have quite often been a lost cause for the men's team that they've ended up going and chasing. Um, that game against Swansea that opened the season, that was that was a, a, a just I can't even really quite put it into words. It, there was a there was a real mentality about the women's team that is that is also present in the men's team, isn't it, Ran? Oh yeah, I, it's that winning mentality that with there. And I don't know if it's we know people are watching or how much the hunger is just in each individual player that uh, you know has been picked to line up on the side. But that never say die. The game's not over till the game's over, and never give up and i mean how many how many late winners are we going to see how many late goals are we going to see and still to see coming on I, I mean rosie hughes with the goal machine that she is still isn't the only goal scorer on that wrexham side you know you had the brace uh from from jones uh pritchard but take take diller's choice of any game and any match of who's going to be looking for those opportunities. And I, I mean, the, the one that I want to see a little bit more of, but she's been injured is, uh, it, it, and how do you say that? Is it Carrie Karopoulos? Is it, how do you say the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Karopoulos. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She, she's a beast that I want to see, mm-hmm. you know, she came out and she looks like she's right in line with everybody else with that hunger. And, what is that team going to be like when they're firing on all cylinders? When you've got everybody that's off of injury back, you know, 
we've we've got Amber back, we've got uh, mm-hmm. Carrie back. It, it's you know we're we're not unlike the men's team. We're seeing a side that is you know not at a maybe a hundred percent of capability hitting their stride, who is still dominating. Mm-hmm. And in their first year within this league, they're making statements. Exactly, and and also you know that that's that, that system that we're playing the four two three one essentially. You really want those wide players to be chipping in with goals. And we've seen teams in the past with the Wrexham men's side who have lined up that sort of formation or a 4-3-3, but they're still relying on the central striker to get a lot of goals. Now, I'm not saying that Rosie Hughes doesn't score a lot of goals, but it's exciting to think you've got Lightfoot and Pritchard who were outstanding all through last year and show, and scored a lot of goals. But then you've also got Cara Jones, who has scored tw- two in a couple of games in the last month. Um and also you've got players like Ava Suckley, who came in and scored six goals at Pulfelli. Now, I know that was a lower division team, but still, she scored six goals. She's got something to offer. Like you say, Kerry Ak- Ker- Yeah, you've got me double thinking <laughs> it there. Kerry Akopoulos is perfectly capable of doing that. Whitefoot and Spearing are young players coming through who are perfectly capable of doing that. Um I know I've missed someone out and I can't, who is it I've missed out? But definitely the sort of strength and depth in terms of competition from those sort of players who can cut in and score goals is insane. And that's great. So you've got Rosie Hughes, but you've got other players who clearly are capable of scoring double figures in a seat in a, a league which has eight teams in it. So, you know, limited opportunities in terms of fixtures. It's exciting. I'm really annoyed about who the other... Pl- uh, there was someone else in my head. Whoever it was, TJ Dickens? What's again? TJ Dickens? No, no, I wouldn't say... Not in that category. I think she's great, by the way. I think she's a superb. Yeah, yeah. And one of my favorite... i start naming names Sharp. I like... Uh, now. No. Yeah. I like them all now we think about it. I'm not, not going to put pressure on our centre back to score double figures. No, whoever it was, and I'm annoyed, and I might have a sneaky look at my spreadsheet... Um, but you know that that quality of, of depth in terms of the players that we have going forwards is very very exciting. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 um it's interesting. Like, look, we wouldn't be able to for both the men's and the women's team. Um, we we wouldn't be able to succeed in the way we are without the the budget and the exposure and everything that comes with the current Wrexham setup. <laughs> you you it's just it. Being realistic, it's just not possible. But just because you have those things doesn't mean that you can that you're automatically going to set up a culture, mm. especially across two different teams, that facilitates uh, uh you know that kind of success and and the same sort of mentality. You know, there's been plenty of managers have managed to to and clubs in general have managed to get a team working with a bunch of uh, it's the old saying, isn't it? Getting a bunch of mercenaries together who just that want that one payday. But I think we we're building in in a way that will hopefully give us a bit of sustained success because we're building a, the correct kind of culture, aren't we, Mark? Hundred percent, and I think great credit to the management staff in both teams for doing so. We've seen lots of examples of clubs that come into money, and it takes them a while to actually start to see the rewards from that. But both the men's and the women's teams, we've seen that massively, and huge credit on the women's side to the fact that. You know, we we yes, we have the money, but I would argue that that money is more useful in terms of developing the infrastructure around yeah. the women's team than splashing out big cash to bring in big players as we have done with Mullen and Toza. Um, and so I think that the the building of that squad has been done on more of a realistic budget, if you will, and is incredibly, incredibly well done. I think it's really the recruitment we have is very impressive in the women's team. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, we, we've we've covered that today, but uh, talking about recruitment, we, we have a guest with us today whose mission in life, his sole mission in life seems to be to recruit more and more Wrexham fans. So uh, after this, we're going to be uh, getting to know Ran a little bit. I'm at the ref, and this is Dragon Heart. So, um, 
it's it's no surprise to anybody who listens to this show um, how much of an impact Wrexham is having in the, in the the wider global culture. I should say. I think it's it's fair to you know we're becoming part of the global mainstream in terms of what's happening. Uh, one of those people that got captured by the Wrexham bug is our guest Ram. Ram, give us give us a little bit of a, a a bit of yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself and and how you got into Wrexham and. And everything, <laughs> Sherry from the States getting a little bit of yeah, a cameo yeah. there. <laughs> I had to throw yeah, the I... flag in there. We were talking about our our global support. Yeah, and shout out yeah. to Sherry. I, I I got to touch that military flag uh, <laughs> be, before it was bequeathed uh, <laughs> to, to you wreck some royalty. And uh, yeah, that's a flag. That's yeah. a real flag there. Uh, in, the, in, in the footsteps of greats like Sherry. Uh, from the States, aka motels on Mars. Um, you know, I I came in like a lot of people with the catching the documentary and then that hunger being there of, okay, well, I've seen a few episodes, but obviously they play in real life. Can I get a couple of games? And then stumbling upon the listening to the game day audio be, you know, before it was streaming or before there was video. And then Mark and team Bill, you, Che, Nil, uh, Andy, saying things like hashtag ask Wrexham. And I had no clue what that was. So I was like literally looking around the internet, Googling to what platform is this on? Because I, I didn't know. And then I finally found, okay, yeah, it was on Twitter or X now. Uh, and then once I jumped in, it was, uh, it was, it was like the community that you guys have built is was designed somehow for the expansion like you you are the missionary service of uh of the of the Wrexham ambassadors because you guys open your hearts up and your arms up you take the patience to explain to us people that ask a question that's been asked a hundred times already to say it as patiently again and it who knows if it's from your your school and uh teaching background of your patience with with dealing with students and children in the past, but you guys are something unique that I don't know where else is something like what the comms team is to Wrexham. If there's a correlation of any other team that has something like that. And you, you guys simply are the gateway drug that lets us experience what bill the man in the stands you know, is going through what Mark and his Alexandria library of Wrexham <laughs> knowledge is. <laughs> and, and, and that's, it's something that where you can't be casual, you can't stay neutral on this moving train. It's, it's going forward. And I think what captured us is similar to what captured the women's team and what captured players that are coming to the men's team. You see something that is doing something positive and doing something good and making impactful change in the world. And for a lot of us, we want to be a part of something like that. We don't have on a day-to-day -day basis, something that is positive, brings joy, has community and something that you can connect with. And you all have somehow made a vehicle that that hole and void in most of our, our lives that we desire. You guys have gave us a platform uh, and a community for us to involve in. I mean, thank you so much for not only having me here today, but I mean, just providing that service for us. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's very kind of you that ran. <laughs> I would say at least not not from I don't have the 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 silky smooth voice of Mark Griffiths or mm. all the uh, <laughs> all the, the the Disney wage either. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I think for me. I, what works with us is that we just kind of represent your average group of football fans that happen to have a platform. Um, it, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with Mark there or if he can hear us because his face is frozen on my end. My, <laughs> that my is definitely, off. that is, de your face is frozen on my end. That is definitely the face of an average Rex man. It probably isn't on I, the, I'm going to take, I'm going to take a photo so you can see it. 
Uh, yeah, it's not frozen on mine. It's, it's clear. Oh, isn't it? It's, it's um, frozen yeah. on mine. The, the thought of my face being frozen on your end is terrifying. Oh, <laughs> Mark, come on. Don't blow on the toe. I've, I've seen the human scent. Oh, I'm not going to go down there. No. <laughs> and I haven't seen it, actually. I, I should point out. Yeah. No. But 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 anyway, you know, I I just feel we kind of we kind of really represent the average sort of Wrexham fan, football fan in general. That's how I see my sort of role in all this. I'm just I just feel really lucky to have great mates who who also happen to have a platform that we can chat on. But uh, yeah, it's nice it's nice to know we've sort of made a bit of an impact. I mean, Mark, you you you've become a bit of a superstar, haven't you? Come on, let's be honest. Oh yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm constantly having to deal with uh, people knocking on the door, you know. I mean, they're all saying things like, would you like to buy fish or can I fix the slate on your roof? I know why they're really there. They just want to get a bit in the presence of me. By the way, for those of you watching on video, just in case you're interested, um, you know, that uh, Ran was making a reference to, you know, uh, the Library of Alexandria. Um, but it, I actually filmed these from inside my head. <laughs> Amazingly. And, and for those that are... At, at, it's that big these days, audio. Mark, is it? That's right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What, what they're also missing, Mark, is with audio, Mark has assumed mm. the position of fame and infamy. He is full-on celebrity. He's reclined back, twisted to a 45-degree angle onto the chair, placed his feet up on the desk and there's about five or six cherubs rubbing his feet as we speak yeah dropping grapes into his mouth <laughs> there's actually a halo around me as well but it, i think it, it might actually be looks like <laughs> of a stufa the, the cat hand puppet that i got on um... <laughs> so i mean like like ran the all, all jokes aside about all this sort of stuff, you know, um, to to sort of go from listening to to Rex and Games on a weekend and getting hooked, and then eventually being able to watch the stream to amassing an absolutely fantastic collection of Rex and memorabilia that you've got in the background there for for the audio listeners. There's a lot, uh, you know. What what makes you make that step, and then? Obviously, we'll talk about your podcast in a minute as well. But you've invested; it's not it's not just a passing interest now, is it? You've invested a lot of time into the into the club. I, I think you know when you find something that speaks to you, it speaks to you, and you can't deny it. And the club, the community, the town, and obviously following along, I wanted to go catch a game in person. And the moment of get, going to Wrexham, meeting you all you know, on the first night that I was there at the Bowling Green and just, <laughs> yes, <what a> pub. <laughs> just feeling completely at home and having, uh, it, it almost felt like you met family that you didn't know before and just being completely, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to say it uh, outside of like falling in love. It, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but there's an undeniable link that if I wanted to stop, I couldn't. And I would probably have to, you know, have some type of 12 step program to <laughs> de Wrexham me if I wanted to at some point in time. It's uh it's in the veins, you know, as uh Spencer Harris said, it's the uh, white and red blood cells are the white and red of uh of the team. The some a poet that wrote a Welsh poet that wrote about Wrexham and its uh importance to the community that it pumps out from the heart it's the core and you know for for me and i would say for pretty much everybody else it, you can't stay casual it's it's a thing that i don't know if uh i don't know if i'll be able to stop so i've embraced it i've stopped fighting it i've embraced it i know that this is my life now i've accepted it i'm wise enough in life to know that uh this is who i am and um you know I, I'm not much for quitting, so I'm going to be here for the long haul. And then, of course, you know, starting a a podcast was something that I didn't look or seek out to do, but there were more people like me that didn't know the ins and outs of Wrexham that 
maybe needed a smaller introductory level that needed something that was maybe more basic and Wrexham 101 that you guys have been living in this and you guys are experts. You guys are Wrexham experts. And there is so much about Wales, so much about Wrexham, so much about the club, the history, the players, the staff that we just chip a piece of the iceberg away. And when you guys call a game, you'll make a reference and that reference could be a book. You know, it could be a book of stories that we don't know that we need to look up and that we need to get the context. And I can't speak for everybody, but I think in a way I can, and that you guys are having so much fun. You said that you're just being you, but you guys are having so much fun. We want to be a part of that fun. We want to be a part of that journey and a part of that ride. And I don't know, like if, if it wasn't for you guys being exactly who you are, uh, you, I don't know if the impact of the marketing of Welcome to Wrexham would have worked in the way that it has. So I, I, I know there's not a who, who are you? How did you get involved? But I can't help but turn it back to there's a magic part of you guys that, you know, of course, you're not going to put the spotlight on yourself outside of what Mark's doing right now. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the, but um, you you guys are a pivotal part for a lot of us international fans. And no kidding that you guys see when we come over, you had uh, Brock bringing you, you know, the, the sweets this last time and uh, count, countless others that are looking to meet you guys when they come over and get to know you because you are as much of the team and as much as Wrexham to us as the players and everybody else. I think, I, think that, of, I think officially, Mark, we can now call ourselves both both equally. A bit like, you know, like how the Ramones all share the surname Ramon, even though <laughs> none of them have the surname Ramon. We are all Mr. Wrexhams now. Yeah. I'm going to take that. Yeah. That sounds reasonable to, to me. Slightly bothered that they didn't have the name Ramon. That's a bit of a bombshell for me, but I'll get over it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I got to say though, Ran, I, I think something that you do brilliantly is that you you what you just explained so well. You, you 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 there is a need for explaining the club and filling those gaps in by spooky coincidence. I'm not saying a great minds think alike. Um, I've got a folder on this laptop called Wrexham 101. Because I Ooh. was thinking exactly the same thing. I just didn't get the time to do it. And I'm so glad I didn't because uh, Teach Me How to Wreck Some, that's just brilliant. And it, it's it's perfectly pitched. And rather similarly to Rob and Ryan and their approach to football, um, your attitude is that while clearly you've already, in a very short amount of time, accumulated a hell of a lot of knowledge, you are humble enough to allow somebody to come in to tell the story Mm. You know, and, you know, a, a good host can step aside and allow somebody interesting to express themselves. You do that brilliantly while putting your imp imprint on what you do as well. Well, all and I'm hearing there, Mark, is that I'm not a very good host because I keep interrupting everyone. So <laughs> I was hoping it was more of an implication. Uh, but having said that, ultimately, my work is done. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, tell me in other ways how Bill has failed. <laughs> yeah, they, God bless him. My only intention of getting involved in Wrexham was to entice Bill in and then try to have a go in at him in public. I've now achieved that. <laughs> So I'm stopping all my Wrexham related activities. Ran, you are my Ran the Baptist, and you must carry on my good work. <laughs> well, well, I I I have been baptized, and I I must go forth and continue the good work of the missionary of Mark. Uh, well, I mean, Bill is you know so pivotal on the series on being able to give me that Wrexham perspective and in kind giving viewers. I, I messed up before and said fans and just completely uh, felt like I put my foot in it when I did that. But when there's viewers and listeners that get that Wrexham perspective on how we feel about different teams, how we feel uh, about matchups, players, even areas of towns, you know, is this a place that you guys would go and visit on holiday? Is it a, is it a place you've been to? How's the reputation? And luckily 
Bill's there to help shepherd the way a lot of the time. And um, it, he he's so humble himself that he probably won't take the shine. But I get inboxed a lot of messages about like how good Bill is and Bill, the super, you know, podcast guest of the century. You know, it, it's every everybody wants a piece of a uh, of Bill and, and, and of course, Mark. But um, uh, I'm not I'm not actually moving towards the camera. This is just my head getting bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger. <laughs> and, and most of the people who say these lovely things about Bill. I mean, are they actually, you know, at large? Are they institutionalized on the whole? <laughs> no, they're, 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 ge they're generally alt accounts that I've made on uh, Twitter <laughs> just, just to... <laughs> yeah. I've, A I've, lot I've of the got... accounts are user with eight numbers after it. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Bill, Bill is the best. Uh, One nine seven yeah. eight five. Yeah. yeah. And occasionally he didn't search and replace. He didn't find and replace. Uh, you know, I from everything. <laughs> and occasionally you do get the typo, and it says like, like I, I was amazing today. I am so smart. <laughs> well, it's yeah, of. You know why not? Why not send me the DMs? Why are they coming to you? I don't understand. Like, don't <laughs> don't be starstruck. You can. <laughs> no, 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 well, I think it's because I have the one Twitter account. Course, that's like I, the I, the show account. So then you just get people who who course. message into there. O yeah. Honestly, I I really like. Yeah, I, the idea of me even being good at anything is I I have I have a imposter syndrome on a daily basis. But uh, that's that's a that's another that's another one for the psychiatry heart or whatever podcast that we want to call that one. <laughs> Whose um, house are you in now? Whose house? <laughs> yeah, just checking on the old imposter syndrome. Sometimes it can get out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do I own it, or do I? Do I deserve it? When there's a family tied up in the basement. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> right, moving <laughs> swiftly on, <laughs> like I will be after we finish this uh, podcast. Uh, uh, just, yeah, for those of you who haven't checked it out, it's it's essentially, um, I, I think it's fair to say it is more for the international fans, but, you know, fans who, who are more local, who maybe only just jumped on the bandwagon, which is, you, you're more than welcome. We need as many people supporting Wrexham as we can get. But even if you're not, listen to it and fact check me because I can't, I can imagine there is loads of stuff I get wrong. Uh, yeah. I, and you get it wrong too, with your American accent, apparently. Uh, so, you know, when you're, when you're doing the Welsh accent, then you're doing the American accent. Uh, well, well, oh, for, oh yeah. Yeah. We had yeah. that comment and we say that me and you look exactly the same and it just blew my mind a little bit that, but uh, <laughs> yeah. There was some, somebody said, uh, it's like, I don't get it. Why is this guy doing two accents? <laughs> well, I just want to point out that I was praised by your compatriots, Ran, for my attempt at a New Jersey accent during the hey. last game. I like to think I'm the only person who's ever attempted a uh, New Jersey accent while commentating on TNS women, but who knows? You you have to have the record, and and for that, it was the best New Jersey accent ever during a match <laughs> against TNS in 2023. And I thank you. Yeah. That was more uh, Oliver Hardy, wasn't it, actually? <laughs> Stanley? But, <laughs> <laughs> Ran, where where can we find you and where can we find your your podcast? What platforms are you on? Where's, what's the best way to, to follow so you? At, follow us and subscribe. Yeah, yeah. So so right now you can follow... Uh, ran and long on teach me how to wreck some it is we have the twitter account but we also have the uh youtube account this has been my week of learning uh since that is i'm a lifelong learner i like to learn things so i have been looking up some articles that uh the dear leader mark had sent me on publishing podcasts so that is something that i will be doing by the end of this week i'll be publishing and so you'll be able to see it on apple spotify and the other, but at the moment it is uh, just on YouTube and still learning. So forgive me, forgive us uh, as we make mistakes going forward, because it won't be the end of them. There'll, there'll be a lot more. <laughs> I, I I think a show is only as good as the, the amount of mistakes you make. And if you're hitting double figures, then fantastic. You must be doing a really good job. <laughs> We're killing it. We're killing it. <laughs> 
Um, Despite these modest chaps' claims, I can assure you it's an excellent listen or watch as well at the moment too. Um, and also that I take your point, Bill, about saying how the natural audiences, the international fans, the new fans, but I, I really w- wouldn't restrict it to that because I think anybody who's talking interestingly about a subject is worth listening to. And I like Rand's point about being a lifelong learner because there's lo- even even me here inside my mind um there's so much <laughs> i i can learn about the club and the number of times you chat to somebody and you find out stuff you never knew uh even if you've been a Wrexham fan for ages it, it's great listening to the podcast because it, it it tells you stories you don't know it reminds you of stories you've forgotten and it's just uh it, it's just an enjoyable listen anyway um because you know you're an affable host and co-host hey. Bill, Mr. Prabhu. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sho- shoehorn myself into that. You know, I, I think I think that the the beauty of the the podcast is that yeah, it might it might have been me more regularly recently, but actually getting those different guests on really does add a flavour because we all come at it with a different perspective. We all have those different memories. You know, Mark remembers when Wrexham were playing in the in uh, the prehistoric ages. Yep, that's right. I I have I have a shallow memory of about two games ago. Uh, you know, and 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 like you say, Mark, we we do all learn quite often. Ram will do his homework beforehand and give me the the Wikipedia version of a club, which I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. It actually is. I have learned so much about different clubs uh, across the country that I just haven't for whatever reason bothered to even look into, I don't know, the history of a Stockport badge or uh, why why Barrow had a B and an arrow on their badge. And that absolutely embarrassed me after we found that out because it was quite obvious that B arrow is the is how you spell Barrow. But uh, <laughs> yeah, go go and go and check that out. And while you're here, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe this like the video, subscribe to to us. Go and subscribe to to Rand's podcast. Catch us on on all the other things we've got. Um, uh, Mansfield in the cup this weekend, which is going to be on S four C for for UK based listeners, and I believe it's on ESPN Plus for for ESPN Americans. Plus for us. Yep. Um, unfortunately, I don't know where it is on on our, uh, in other countries, but I'm sure it'll be available. Um, Mark, any final thoughts? I was just thinking back to that great front line we had in prehistoric times. We had Ugg on the right, um, Krieger in the <laughs> middle, and Bundalo on the left. Man, what a lineup there were! No, you know. no boots, just just oh, bare no. feet. And kicking a stone in those days, you know. I mean, <laughs> those stones in the water. water. I remember we beat the Mitradon Villa five uh, one. It was just a classic. <laughs> Happy days. Headers could end a game. Oh, well, headers, often life ending, never mind career ending. Yeah. F- fantastic we'll, we'll uh, wrap this up then lads. and uh, I'll see you on the other side on Flintstone Heart I think um, hey <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening I've been Bill they've been Mark and Ran uh, this has been Dragon Heart Bill Ma <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> sorry chaps we'll have to be done <laughs>